Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 11, Episode 71. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com. Glad you guys are back with us for this Monday Steelers Nation. Dave, how are you doing? Uh, it sounds like you're in a big room there. <laughs> it sounds like you moved. I know. It's a, little bigger, it's a little bigger of a space. Hopefully, everything audio-wise sounds okay. Just finished the move, so train noises are gone. Apologize if there's any audio issues in this episode. We'll get it kind of worked out, though, and at least it's the off-season to have these type of problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does sound like you're in a greater room there. I can say, I, 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 mm-hmm. I can uh, hear greatness uh, go, going on there, <laughs> and not just related to you in general, uh, but but greatness room-wise there. So how, how did the move go? Went well. I will never move myself again. I hired a moving company, and I highly, highly recommend. I can never go back now. Uh, absolutely right. I I would agree with that. And I and and, and it took me. Uh, I wasn't in a financial position to do that until much later in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I I'm with you. Anytime you can get uh, somebody else uh, other than friends moving your stuff, uh, it, it, it's certainly the way to go. Absolutely. All right, Dave. We got a big show today. Where do you want to start this thing off? We got some big news. We got some smaller news to begin with. You can start steering the ship for us. Where do you want to kick things off? Yeah, I think everybody probably want to, uh, you know, the 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 uh, the news that came out a couple of days ago, you know, about Matt Canada and and, and Ben Roethlisberger. I think that's probably the uh, the most obvious place to start here today on this Monday. All right, let's start with the vacant offensive coordinator spot that may not be vacant for much longer. Reports are that Matt Canada will be promoted as the in-house replacement for Randy Feetner. That news, I believe, came out Saturday. has not been confirmed. The Steelers still would have to interview a minority candidate, uh, unknown if they have yet or not. But all expectations and reports point to Matt Canada becoming the next offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, kind of. I mean, that's uh, uh, if that indeed is what's going to happen. Look, ne- neither one of us, I think, uh, were uh, our jaws dropped when that came across. There, uh, probably just more more so how quick you know th- that 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 kind of report surfaced more than anything. I still kind of wonder if if minority if you're pro- if you're promoting from within if minority uh, if minority candidates have to be interviewed. You know, because why would something like that surface? Uh, I mean, and why, if you're a minority candidate at this point, if you haven't come in, why would you at this point, you know, uh, just to be kind of that, that, that token guy, if you will, there. So interesting, just more than anything because of the timing of this, but, but if indeed this is, is what ends up transpiring when Matt Canada, it's obviously not a shock because, uh, you know, because of the, uh, you know, the, the obvious things that go go along with that. Ben Roethlisberger possibly coming back and, and and you know, the Steelers promoting within has, has kind of been a thing uh, in, in the past there. I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally sold that it's the right decision, though, if indeed that, that is the, 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 uh, the ultimate decision here. Yeah, the way I phrased the hire, because obviously, you know, the Steelers said they wanted to to stop the status quo and and do something different. That's what, that was the mantra and the theme of Mike Tomlin's year end press conference. But so this idea of just going with Canada, a one year guy, but certainly has that you know fresher face, innovative type type mold. It's the idea of rock, excuse me, rocking the boat without tipping it over, and, and that's I think the approach this team is taking, where they still get some level of stability with Canada, but they do get to at least, you know, make a move. And, and will it work out? I, I don't know. I think it'll be very interesting to see that relationship between Ben and Canada and obviously Canada's style of offense. He's run at different places. Isn't going to work the same way with, with a 39 year old, you know, to be quarterback, uh, one of the least mobile quarterbacks in football. So just that dynamic in itself, it, it makes me a little uneasy, but I think this team wanted to still have some level of continuity with while still being able to, to make a change. In other words, try to have the best of both worlds, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'll just <laughs> yeah, rock good, the boat without tipping it over. Good, good, good luck with that. Look, if you go back and you and you, and you look at the tape from 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 LSU, from uh, University of uh, University of Pittsburgh, and you see some of the. 
the more and, and even Maryland, right? You you uh, you see some of the more kind of uh, is exotic the, the the right word I'm looking for the more uh, uh, motion centric uh, pre snap kind kind of things. You know that 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 uh, we we've we've obviously talked about quite a bit since Matt Canada was hired originally. Uh, you going to have that much background noise coming, you know, happening, uh, you know, how much more of that, that we did not see in, in, in 2020 with his fingerprints on the offense, are we going to see and how much of the, uh, of the overall playbook, you know, that, you know, let's face it, Ben's run for, you know, 12 years, 12, you know, or if not more, uh, uh, obviously, since he's been in Pittsburgh, you know, how much of that's going to stay in place here. This just smells of trying to be best of both worlds here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, well, obviously, we'll see how it goes here. But unless we really see a, 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 a huge influx of some of these things that we have seen on tape with Matt Cannon at Maryland at Pitt at LSU, then really what, what have you accomplished here? Yeah. I mean, obviously Canada's influence was evident, you know, from, from week one and the Steelers motion rate for the entire season, even if the motion seemed to fade a bit towards the end, still finished in the top 10, I believe eighth overall. Um, And so, you know, I think we'll definitely see that continue again though. So much of this motion and new age type of offense with all this misdirection is built around a quarterback that is a threat to run the football. That's an extra (laughs) guy that defenses have to account for. And obviously that's not going to be the case in Pittsburgh. So that would be the worry there is just can Canada make this offense work to the fullest the way he knows it with a quarterback that is – you know, kind of the opposite of the quarterbacks that he likes to work with and and his offense is built around. Right. Uh, And, you know – uh, I understand that it, it that that the promotion of Canada does does fit, especially beyond you know potentially beyond 2021 with Roethlisberger. But what does this do for right now? As you know, especially if, if indeed Roethlisberger does come back, which you know obviously signs have been pointing in uh, pointing that way. Uh, you know, is it just going to be? You know, Randy feet in her offense light, you know, with 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 a little bit more motion or or, or, mm-hmm. or what here? You know, that that's the biggest concern here, because uh, obviously the 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 elements of a of a Matt Canada offense, once again, going back the last you know, several stops here is heavy, heavy, heavy motion, heavy shifting pre, you know, pre uh, pre snap shifting uh, with this, you know, especially with the tight ends and then some some some, you know, uh, form of mobility with the, with the quarterback, either you're rolling them out, you know, th- th- those kind of things like there. And you know, a lot of those, a lot of those moving parts, I, I, I don't imagine Ben Roethlisberger is going to like a, a, a larger influx of. Right. And just to the broader resume of Canada, and this is something we talked about when he was hired to be the quarterback's coach. He seemed to do a good job as QB's coach. It was an important hire. Rudolph seemed to, to show progression. So that was good. But this is a guy that has bounced around a lot, very little stability in his career. There's a lot of reasons for that. I can't tell exactly why he's moved around so much, but that is, you know, one, one concern where you can sit there and say, this guy's never really been in a place for more than two or three years, at least not recently. And so you wonder, you know, how long is he really going to be in Pittsburgh for? Right. Uh, what, what were, you know, how, how, how do you how do you view it? Are you are you disappointed? I mean, overall, I'm I'm obviously kind of disappointed. I understand why it happened, and and obviously, I will I will look at it at, at, you know as as the season progresses of uh, you know the the improvements of the offense and all like that. I mean, look, I mean the running game can't get any worse, right? I mean, and mm-hmm. you you obviously right. need to dedicate. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the off season, albeit moves, uh, draft, what have you, uh, to uh, to improving that, and we've yet to see who the offensive line coach uh, uh, is going to be at at this point. We don't even know if you know, guys like Juju are going to make it back to this team yet. So you know, there's still a lot of different things have got that 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 need to be worked out here with this thing. But overall, what was your what was your general feeling? Did did you feel that this was the way they were they were going to go? And is in your gut this the proper way to go? Um, 
I mean, I'm not surprised that they went you know, with Canada. That was always the mo- most obvious name that you could point to, just given the Steelers still focus on, on some level of continuity, like I mentioned earlier. I, I, I don't know if it's the right hire or the wrong hire. I can see how it could be the wrong hire. I, I'm just curious to see you know, the compromise that will have to exist between Ben and getting comfortable with what Canada likes and Canada understanding the limitations of his quarterback and how he may have to compromise some of his ideals for the offense. And I think when you start that – conversation with like immediate compromise on core values and things you do well and things that that your philosophy is that can create some problems uh but we'll see i'm not going to say it's a bad hire i'm not gonna say it's a great hire i'm just very curious to see how this kind of you know 39 year old quarterback in canada who's not much older than ben kind of works out right right uh now obviously still got to yet to uh Obviously, they need a quarterbacks coach, right? It would be silly to make right. make Canada uh, 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 do a repeat of what uh, uh, basically mm-hmm. Randy Feetner had to do, right? Which is you know right. run the offense and run the quarterback room. I mean, I I think you just you know you're really really handicapping a guy. Uh, you know, I, I had thrown out there the fact that I thought you know potentially that Jim Caldwell would be on the short list of 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 offensive coordinators that that Mike Tomlin would interview there. Uh, maybe Caldwell wants to ease back into this thing, right? Uh, uh, and, and I don't think Caldwell has that big of an ego where he wouldn't be above coming back in and and basically, you know, coming back to the NFL game, which I don't think he's coached since since early 2019 when he had to step away with uh, uh, mm-hmm. with some, some sort of issues. yeah health issue, uh, undisclosed health issue, but. Uh, you know, do you think he would be open to coming? It would give a little bit, you know, a seniorness, if you will, to that uh, to that uh, offensive side of football. Because let's face it, you look at the off, you know, you look at the offensive coaching staff as is right this moment, and and this assumes that that Canada is the offensive, uh, the new offensive coordinator. There, there's not a lot of experience on that side of football. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know, uh, Ike Killian is the only one, I think, with more than three years uh, NFL coaching experience uh, on, on that side of the football there. So, mm. obviously, with uh, uh, your offensive line coach and your quarterback's coach, and, and we'll see what happens with the, with, with, with the tight end's coach position here, you need to add some veteran leadership uh, on that side of football. If not, then... You know, I, I don't like it for the offensive side of football. Um, yeah, no, you, I think it's a great point that you mentioned that you have to have some veteran guys. I think the offensive line coach hires, they, they got to get that right as much as they have to get right the OC hire. I, I guess the only concern, and that's not just specific to Caldwell, but just any sort of veteran quarterbacks coach should be, you know, potentially upsetting that dynamic with like, if you bring in Caldwell that has this experienced guy and is he going to really be the, not the guy running the show, but kind of the guy running the show over Canada. And and not the Caldwell's that type of guy, but just I just worry about that, I guess, dynamic of having that that veteran former OC quarterbacks coach with your first year NFL offensive coordinator and how that may work with Ben and that relationship could could potentially be an issue. Well, it, it, it obviously go down to the personalities, right? You know, uh, right. Uh, and whether or not they could coexist. I don't I and look, I, I have it. I, I've done kind of the the precursor kind of view of of, of Caldwell, and obviously I know about a lot about him from from his time around the league. He doesn't come off as a uh, no, yeah, he's not bullish, mo- like, you know, ca- right? Ca- Territorial, right, right, but kind of guy. Just, 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 but just a sixty five year old quarterbacks coach who's a former head coach, former OC with Ben with Canada. I don't know. I I, I could see that being a, a weird relationship where it feels like. Caldwell is like a, like a Tom Bradley, Terrell Austin kind of thing, where it's not that Terrell Austin is territorial, but like we all know he was running the show even though he had the lesser title. All right, well, let's back up here. What was kind of you when Matt Canada was brought in last year? Uh, I, I probably had a different take on it a little bit than you, but I mean, we, we, kind, we, we, it, it was kind of evident that it was a potential, uh, OC in, 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 in waiting, right? I mean, we both agreed on that, I believe. Right, but I, I wouldn't consider it the same dynamic because Canada was younger and less experienced. It wasn't like Canada was coming in to run the room. You know what I'm saying? It was it was potentially a, an understudy kind of thing, but it wasn't like a you know it wasn't that he was older or more experienced or had a bigger resume than, than Randy Feetner. 
Yeah, but because he was coming in at from you know at, uh, from the college rank at, pretty much as an OC, there had to be some degree of 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 looking over the shoulder there. Yeah, but again, the dynamic wouldn't be that Canada was coming in to like to run things. It was potentially an understudy. It's just, it'd be, it was a different relationship. It'd be a weird one too, but I think a different kind of weird. Well, here, here, here's the thing: they need, you know, I don't think you just need a green quarterback coach now either. You know, sure. right? Sure, sure. Uh, so and, and 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 you know, you know, the old dog and new tricks thing and all like that. There's still look. Uh, Caldwell's worked with some some. Big names, obviously, in, in, in quarterback rooms over the years. Peyton Manning, Joe Flacco, uh, Matthew Stafford. Uh, who, who, who else has he been, been along the way there? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Brad Johnson in, in the early days with Tampa Bay there. Uh, if, if Matt Canada can't handle Jim Caldwell hanging around, then maybe, maybe, maybe Matt Canada is the one with the problem. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, but it wouldn't be the it would be Caldwell's fault. I don't know. I, I could just see that dynamic being uncomfortable. And I'm, maybe it wouldn't be, and that'd be great. But I'm just I'm just spitballing ideas. Probably not any more uh, uh, uncomfortable than Randy felt when <laughs> Matt Canada was hired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, right. well, uh, that, that, that we're, we're spinning Canada our wheels here. I mean, we keep going back and forth here. You know, we're, we're spinning our wheels here. But uh, uh, I would highly consider potentially. A guy like Jim Caldwell, uh, uh, even if you had to tell him right out, right out of the bat, look, this is uh, Canada's show here offensively. Mm-hmm. Even if you made Caldwell the run game coordinator, you know, or, or, or you know, to help along those lines, or even if you just told him to sit on his hands and coach the quarterbacks, and that's it, you know. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the offensive line coach. One of those two positions better have some ageism to it, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, the, for sure. I think O-line, I think you want to find just the, the most grizzly veteran offensive line coach possible. I think it's the right way to go with that hire. Hey, hey, here's my overall arching thoughts on this as well, too. Uh, and and I, wrote, I wrote this as much in, in, in the piece that I wrote up on Caldwell the other day here. This could potentially be Mike Tomlin's last offensive coordinator in his career in Pittsburgh, correct? Potentially, although although with the way Canada bounces around, maybe not. Right. I mean, I mean, and really. So, what you're saying is he could very well be one and done, or what? I mean, I'm just saying based off of Canada's resume, he just bounces around a lot. But hopefully, Canada is able to have some stability here in Pittsburgh, and if he does, and obviously that means that that things went very well, and and that's obviously the goal here. I mean, I just kind of find it curious that. Because let, let's face, what if what if uh, what if Ben comes? What are the what would the expectations be? Let's back up a little bit here. Let's let's mm-hmm. uh, let let's say Ben does indeed come back, and let's uh, let let's say that the uh, the salary cap comes in closer to one hundred ninety eight point two million. You're able to get one or two of these uh, uh, these uh, you know high, higher profile uh, unrestricted free agents back. Maybe a guy like Juju. Maybe a guy like like uh, Cameron Sutton. Uh, here and you could put some semblance uh, of something together that 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 you think you could you know helps you compete for potentially make another run you know make a playoff run here uh if if that's not met if this team if this team goes back and does not make the playoffs again in 2021 and even worse if uh, they make the playoffs and get bounced in the first round again i mean you know, I've never been a fired Mike Tomlin guy, but I I, mm-hmm. I, I, I think if, if you know if, if Ben comes back and you get a couple of these uh the, these un, you know soon to be unrestricted free agents back here, then you're 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 giving the impression that mm, we think we can make a run at this thing, right? And sure. and sure. and what happens if you don't? You know, if Mike Tomlin doesn't, then. I mean, I, I think at this point, yeah, I think there is such thing right now, right now as a hot seat in, in, in 2021 for Mike Tomlin. So, you know, do you just turn your head and say, well, you know, we, we gave it one last valiant run and we didn't make the playoffs or we didn't make the playoffs and we got bounced again. Or you, and, and, and to back that up even farther, it just it seems kind of curious that Mike Tomlin would put <laughs> his offense in the hands of a guy that's never been an NFL offensive coordinator before. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, um, I, I think it's all understood and well taken. Uh, and and this division is going to be so tough to win that you know you, you know it's going to get better. Uh, the the Ravens are getting better. The Browns obviously are getting better. Uh, the Bengals are even going to going to get better. Uh, so I think we are certainly seeing the we're on the precipice of that transition period of the Ben era to the post Ben era. And I think it's going to be uncomfortable the further we get the, as more things change and more people leave, coaches and players, and uh, just kind of. You know, the the lack of stability that we're used to is going to be, I think, a weird feeling for Steelers Nation. How much say do you think Art Rooney II has in in, 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 in the hiring of the offensive coordinator? Uh, I, I did quite, you know, I obviously, and in, in, uh, I, I wrote the article about Caldwell on what, Saturday, I think it was, Friday or Saturday, I forget which, which mm-hmm. day it was there, but... Uh, uh, you know, you go back and you read some of these old quotes, you know, uh, especially when, when the Steelers went from... Uh, uh, the retirement, quote unquote, of Bruce Arians. Boy, what a, what a mess that is to look back at, mm-hmm. especially yeah. in, <laughs> what all what all has transpired again uh, 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 this season here. The retiring of Bruce Arians to uh, the hiring of, of 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 Todd Haley, and if you go back and and we don't know t- totality wise how many uh, uh, offensive coordinator candidates that, that that Mike Tomlin talked to, but we do know that only two of them came in for quote unquote final interviews there. Uh, that being Todd Haley and, 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 and Jim Caldwell there. And at the time there was the, uh, the, the, the kind of wondering did, did Art Rooney the second kind of lead Mike Tomlin into the, 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 the Todd Haley, you know, decision there. And, in so many words, you know, I, I believe uh, uh, Rooney had a uh, a press conference with with you know, maybe just a few me- media members to try to put that to bed that it was Mike's decision uh, to uh, to hire Todd Haley and not his buddy Jim Caldwell, if you will. Uh, you know, we see how the, how all that worked out. I guess what I'm getting at how uh, you know this time around, this this many more years removed from it. Uh, how much say do you think Art Rooney II has in, in, in who's going to be offensive coordinator of this team in 2021? It's a really good question. I, I don't have a specific answer for you. Um, I, I know that the Rooneys have always had the approach of being more hands-off, so I don't think he has you know, as much say or sway as, as some owners will, uh, certainly not the level of a Cherry Jones or someone like that. Um, I, I think he just has an overall idea. You know, he, he gives the mandate of the overall things he's looking for, the big picture type things, improve the run game, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever those broad fixes are, and then allows Colbert and Tomlin and the staff to address those things specifically. It's kind of my feeling of, of how that dyna- dynamic works. Once again, this goes back to what I wrote in that article. Boy, if this is uh... – <laughs> Do you feel Mike Tobin really wants wants to tie his wagon to Matt Canada to potentially be his last offensive coordinator uh, as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers? I think that's a lot more plausible question to ask than uh, than it ever has been before. Because once again, I never really viewed Mike Tomlin as one as being on you know hot seat ish, if you will. But look, mm-hmm. he's, look how long he's been in Pittsburgh now. A long, long run, obviously, uh, not only NFL wise, but 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 Pittsburgh wise, uh, and you know the the results, you know, obviously are, are, are the results, especially the last couple of playoff appearances there. So, uh, and then now you're looking at coming up on a, you know, the uh, the trains. You could definitely see see the. Uh, the, the train coming through the tunnel now, as far as Ben Roethlisberger's career goes. Now, you know they've obviously been talking about the window, the windows, the windows closing for Ben's mm-hmm. career. The window's been closing since like I don't know 2011, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it feels like. Well, now that window's obviously. I think it's hard to, to view it as anything other than it. It's getting close to closing. Uh, but we still don't know how exactly how far we are away from it. But it, we're a lot more closer than the window uh, of the window closing than you were in, <laughs> in 2011. When I mean, it seems every off season has been the windows closing on Ben Roethlisberger's career, you know. But uh, now it really might be closing, you know. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's where my head is at with 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 all this right now, Alex. Is man, you coming off of this? Look. 
Should this team have gone to the Super Bowl this year? I mean, there, there's arguments, obviously, against it because of uh, the, the, the the Chiefs and the Bills and just what's on, on the AFC side of things there. But, Lord have mercy, they should have beat that that Cleveland Browns team. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at least we today we should be talking about whether or not the Steelers are were, uh, are advancing to the AFC Championship game. Uh, the fact that they bowed out early earlier in the manner that they did, I think, brings with it the talk about could 2021 potentially be Mike Tomlin's last uh, last year coaching with the Steelers, and and mm-hmm. if so, I'm not so sure if I'm Mike Tomlin. I want to tie my wagon to Matt Canada is what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, I understand. It's been a disappointing decade. I wrote that immediately after the Browns lost that, that you've had all these great talent and this Hall of Fame quarterback in the, these last 10 years. You've had very, very little to show for it. Um, do you think that the high, the, assuming that the candidate is promoted, is that enough of a status quo change for your liking or for your definition of it? Or do you think it's still too much in that in-house you know, kind of conveyor belt of just next man up? with the coaching staff mentality too. I'm not sure I understand the context of your question. Well, put, put, do you think Canada – Tell it to do, me like I'm think, five. Do you view Canada <laughs> as a status quo higher, or do you think it's out of the box enough? Or do you think just the fact that they fired Feetner or moved on from Feetner part of the ways uh, is enough to avoid the status quo issue this team has had? It just stinks of trying to please so many sides instead of mm-hmm. addressing the problem to me. What is the problem then? The problem is, is, is that, uh, the, the problem is, is, is you've got to put uh, Roethlisberger in some level of uncomfortability, more so than than what it feels like he might be put in uh, with, uh, with 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 Matt Canada coming in. Uh, and this obviously mm-hmm. assumes that that that, that Roethlisberger comes. It it just it just feels like it. We want to rock the boat, like almost like you said. We want to rock the boat, but we just don't want to rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Don't mm-hmm. tip the boat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. They're trying to thread that needle. Just get this higher just right. Right. Uh, and, and and my question is, is if you trusted Matt Canada so much, why didn't you let him have even more influence in this thing? During the second half of the season or whatnot, you know, there's just. No, we don't know. We don't know what is influence. Uh, right, we, we don't. don't. We don't know that dynamic. Right. Well, and their I motion mean, rate overall was still high, even for them. I mean, they still finished with eighth in, in in motion rate. I mean, that that's a huge jump, and obviously his influence was felt. This just smells of trying to have the best of both worlds. I guess is is, mm-hmm. is, is where I'm at. It. We want we want uh, some new ideas in there, but at the same time, we don't we don't want to run the risk of a uh, Todd Haley-like situation coming in where Ben, where all we talk about is, I don't know, I might retire, you know. Uh, you remember how, how all that was after the first, what was it, year or two years or whatever it was, uh, there uh, with Ben, I don't know, you know. Uh, it, it just stinks of just trying to trying to please both sides here. And, and when you try to do that, usually you end up pleasing nobody. You know what I'm saying? All right. Sure, absolutely. And I think – do you think there's any consideration to if we don't promote Canada, we're going to lose him this year or next to someone else to be an OC? Obviously, he was talking with Miami, interviewed there. And do you think the team's approach was, well, we don't want to lose Canada and have to get a new quarterback's coach and get a new offensive coordinator, so let's just promote Canada? I, I suppose, but it, it, once again, uh, the, the goal is to win a championship. Every, if the goal okay. is to win the championship every year – which we are led to believe is the case every time uh, uh, Kevin Colbert gets on the podium uh, there, then you do whatever it is you think gives you the best chance to win the championship in 2000. You look towards the future, yes, but uh, uh, if if, if your mantra is we do everything we can to compete for a championship every year, then you do whatever that is, even with, with, with the coaching staff. And yeah, I mean, I right. think it is concerning that. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know Matt Canada. I don't have a great read on him yet. Look, we only get to hear from him like what twice a year uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, right now. Obviously, we'll hear a lot more from him uh, if indeed he's named the offensive coordinator on a weekly basis moving forward here. But uh, once it, this just stinks of just trying to do the right thing in in so many different realms, you know. The, that I worry about how much structurally is the offense 
uh, and the play calling going to change? And is there still going to be this, well, things worked, I called the plays from Ben Roethlisberger, uh, you know, th- those kind of things. Yeah, no, understood. I think I think it's good. Yeah, I think it was uncertainty for for sure with this one. Um, I think that, that's a fair assessment, and so we'll see. I'm not I'm not you know crazy about this hire. I'm not going to pan it either, but I'm not crazy about this hire. Well, I, I guess that's where I'm going. I wanted to get back to where where are you on this thing? And and you just answered that. Uh, took us 30 minutes to get get to that point, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not I'm not crazy about I'm I'm open to it obviously because you know uh, you you just look look back alone at what Matt Canada did at Pitt. You know, just look at the Pitt. Look look what he did at Pitt alone, and, and pull that tape. You know, and and, and don't go any further. Uh, but how much of that are we going to actually see? Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, that is that is the, it was one of the first things that popped in my head was just how is that Canada's philosophy and what he's done doesn't mesh with Ben's style. There'll have to be some sort of compromise, some sort of blend like you saw this year. But will Canada ever get to feel like he gets to run the full extent of his offense with Ben and his quarterback? Probably not. And how do you adjust to that and how do you tailor things? And again, for Canada, thread that needle between his offense and what works for Ben, a challenge any coach has to have, you know, any, anytime there's any philosophical difference, but um, that'll be, I think the most challenging part of, of Canada's you know job here and, and time here in Pittsburgh. Do you feel he's got a, a, a more of an ego than Randy Feetner? Yes, but I think most people have a, a bigger ego than Randy Feetner. Feetner really was kind of a no ego kind of guy. And so Canada, I mean, just most people would probably have a bigger ego than, than Feetner, but I think Canada certainly does. Okay. Which isn't a bad thing. I'm not saying it's terrible. I mean, I think you have to have some level of ego as a, as a coordinator and be confident in what you're doing. But, but yeah, I think he's probably going to have more of an ego than, than Randy Feetner. Okay. So we'll see. It hasn't been made official, obviously, but uh, we assume it will be, and uh, we'll probably get confirmation of that sometime later this week. All right. Uh, and once again, you know, we're, we're still waiting to, you would think that the rest of the dominoes would, 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 would start falling into the place here pretty soon. When you're talking about, uh, uh, offensive line coach and, and quarterbacks coach, and you had an interesting, uh, uh, kind of following up on, 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 on my thoughts of a, of a guy like Doug Marone, potentially being, uh, the next offensive uh, line coach, you had, you went in a little bit different, uh, uh, direction there. Yeah, the article I wrote for what was this yesterday, and this is just you know idle speculation, but could Chris Forrester be the Steelers' next offensive line coach? Was the article you can see it's sticky to the top of Steelers Depot. Just run through the whole reasons. He's a veteran guy, didn't have much of an NFL resume, but has been coaching football since I think 1982, 1983. Uh, it's been the NFL for a long time. Uh, most recently with the 49ers as a consultant and then an assistant offensive line coach. 49ers run games have course been strong now for several years um i know that the number one thing people know about chris forster is the drug addiction that he had that got revealed in the video back with miami in 2017 forced his resignation and so this would be a potentially controversial hire i go through all that throughout the article this the, the programs he's been part of the rehab the 12-step things he's done um since that addiction came to light but i think the fact the 49ers you know hired him have been able to work him into their facility after serving as a consultant initially shows that they're comfortable with the, the steps he's done, the job that, that he's been doing. I know Tony Dungy has vouched for Forrester. Obviously, Tomlin and Dungy have a pretty close relationship. Um, so I'm not saying this is going to be the guy, but Tomlin and Forrester work together in Tampa Bay. Um, and I think this, this at least has some logical connections. And Forrester's a veteran, proven guy that's molded a lot of great offensive linemen, like Trent Williams, Joe Staley, guys like that. So I think it's a name to at least consider. All right, uh, definitely some links there, and that that's usually the kind of stuff that uh, that, that we look for, right? You know, trying trying to uh, right. connect the dots going back. Yeah, I know some people get on as saying, you know, not every single hire has to have a connection, and that's true. But most Tomlin hires have a connection to some degree where, where paths have crossed before. That's just typical in coaching in general. So um, you look around; these new coaching hires are taking the guys they just worked with to their new their new places, whether that's you know Staley with the Rams or Salah with the Jets, um, guys like that. So I know that you know that can't be the only reason, and it's certainly not with Forrester. But usually, those connections. Uh, from guys that have worked with in the past and you know, Tomlin's worked with their names that come up again down the line. You wouldn't think the offensive line uh, candidate list is going to be very long in general, right? You wouldn't think. 
I I don't know. I think they want to make this thorough, get this thing right. I think the Surratt hire was just kind of that, okay, literally, you know, they gave Surratt the job as Munchak said that he was leaving for Denver. So I think you want to be thorough and make sure that you're not missing any names here or not being too quick with this hire. Well, it sort of feels that way with the Canada one. <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little bit quick for sure. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, an once once yeah, again, no, I, I, yeah. I would like to find a little bit more clarity. I'm not sure if if, if some of that uh, stuff that I've read, and I think you even sent me a link to some of it. I'm not even sure. I would like clarification on the minority thing versus in-house hires. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that matters. I don't think in-house is going to – because the vacant says if you have a vacancy at a coordinator position, you have to hire or you have to interview at least one minority candidate. Okay. And they have a vacancy at offensive coordinator. I don't well, like why, why have have an exception for an in-house Why hire. haven't we heard who that minority is? It seems like that – seemed like all that transpired real, real quick, didn't it? You know? Well, I think there's a reason why they're saying that it's not been made official yet because they still have to fulfill those things. Like with Feetner – when they did the in-house hire for Feetner, that was announced what hours after Haley was gone, correct? Yeah, but once again, that looks it looks bad for 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 the Rooney Rule. <laughs> you, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, sure, yeah, it's been an issue. Yeah, it's been there's loopholes to it, and there's a reason why it hasn't worked. But I'm just saying that's the rule. All right. I don't know. Um, either way, regardless of who they interviewed or who they didn't interview, I mean, it seems like Canada is going to be the guy. All right, and the news on Roethlisberger that really not shocking and and really is it is it really was it really news or repackaged news? Yeah, it felt repackaged. Of uh, I think news what this news came out Saturday Sunday that Ben plans to return in 2021. Team welcomes him back. There's at least there's growing optimism that Ben will return. We know he's coming back, and that he was hoping or he hopes the team is able to retain and re-sign Juju as well. Uh, you know, we obviously wrote it up because, you know, it, it happens during these, uh, during these pregame shows or whatnot. And, you know, they, they, they do a good job of, 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 of potentially repackaging this stuff and making it seem like new news or whatnot. Uh, neither, neither one of us is, uh, to me, it'd be an upset right now. If ben did not come back for 2021 season. Uh, would you agree? major upset if he does not return right for any reason right i mean it just it just feels like that that that's the way that this thing is going and and even on top of uh uh that you know you throw in the canada news on top of it, it it really makes it seem that way so obviously none of this is official and i don't think ben's gonna make it a you know w- 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 would make it official right out of the shoot Anyway, so and, and 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 until we get a more official word, and look, it, there's not going to be anything more official than a date than a few days after the start of the new league year in 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 March, mm-hmm. and obviously we'll know probably a little bit before that, I would think, especially when it comes to uh, to Ben's contract and and potentially some of the things they may or may not want to do when it comes to that. But at, at, at a minimum, by the time middle of March rolls around really by the first of March, you know, we're, we're going to have some, some certainty when it comes to, to Ben Roethlisberger's future, you know, uh, in 2021. And at this point I would be pretty, pretty much stunned if it works out that Ben Roethlisberger's not the quarterback of this team in 2021. And I've been that way all the, all the way all all along, but I mean, there, you know, you still got to make it through this part of the off season anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're at the stage where the more interesting question isn't if he comes back. We know he's going. We're pretty confident he's going to come back, but just how they handle the contract and will there be an extension, and if so, what that looks like. I think that is the far more interesting question to be asking right now. Is there any chance whatsoever they extend him with real years on this thing? Yeah, I think there's a chance. Uh, so, another in other report. words, another another two year mm-hmm, extension. Not- you know. Right, that isn't avoidable years and false years and all that. Um, right, for, other, I mean, you know, real and, and comply. What I mean by real extension, too, I mean, it's tough to do. Uh, a real extension with real, real new money in it, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is tough to do. I mean, you can still do it, I think, and lower his cap number a little bit. Uh, you know, what are, what are the chances of that versus a uh, really a a, a a a false year, voidable year extension? 
Yeah, I think there's a chance that the report was that Ben said he, you know, his body felt good and his elbow felt good, and those are the most important things that would at least give him the the chance theoretically to continue in his NFL career. So there's a chance. I, I don't know what percentages to put at it. I don't really have any expectations for the approach they're going to take with his contract. That's why I think I said it's the most interesting question because I, I I don't really know what direction Ben's going to want to go, where the team's going to want to go, and and all those things. What would you do? What would you do if you're the Steelers? Would would you uh, and let's say he was willing to go uh, twenty five uh, twenty five million dollar uh, uh, average salary, which which would put him way down in the middle of the pile, you know, uh, mm-hmm. as far as new money average goes and all like that. So what if you could do something a two year extension where maybe I've, I'll have to look back at some of my examples here, but uh, uh, if he took a moderate new money average would would with, with uh, you know, and you were able to stretch this thing out, lower his cap hit by, let's say, about two or three million uh, this season, uh, but yet have him under contract, you know, two more years past 2021. Would you, where are you with Ben Roethlisberger on something like that? Or would you say, yeah, look, I... let's let's just try to let's just try to eat this cap hit and see how see how this year go- because obviously if you don't get him signed past 2021 right now you don't extend him period then to get him re-signed you 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 know it starts with the tag obviously mm-hmm. and the only right way Ben Roethlisberger gets to the tag situation is if he's had a f- phenomenal 2021 uh, on top of it, or are you, you know, would you be fine if your management saying, let's just look each other uh, in the eye after this 2021 season is over. Let's just um, uh, maneuver around this cap hit of yours. Look, we're only paying you $19 million, $19 million anyway, you know, uh, let, let's see how this year goes. It's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I, and basically, if you don't do anything with Ben's contract, it's essentially just saying this is your last year in Pittsburgh. And I think it's Ben saying that, too. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah. I, I really think if you don't get any uh, – barring – I mean, because obviously the team hold, would hold the rights to, to a franchise sure. tag, you know, right, uh, and, and, and all like that. So it would be more on the Steelers' end of whether or not uh, – and obviously, you know, would, would Ben walk – I don't know what the franchise tag would be after the 2000 and. 21 season i i, I a you know, lot uh, a lot i mean over 30 million right you know mm-hmm. uh for, for 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 sure uh and then it would be more in the steelers corner you know more so i i think then you know, obviously roethlisberger could retire you know but uh if he had a good 2021 season or a great 2021 season you know would he would he walk away from 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 a tag amount there yeah, but it does feel like if you just do nothing, that's Ben and the team both saying that we're accepting sure. that 2021 is going to be my last year. You know? Sure. That's my viewpoint of it. And, and so if you don't want to do that, you know, do you want to do an extension? I, I'd be open to it. Would Ben be open to it? I, I think Ben wants to maybe just start taking this thing year by year. And that's why he's stressed about honoring his contract and then just kind of going from there. I don't know if Ben – and maybe he does, but I don't know if Ben wants to make that commitment right now. But once again, what would you do if – would you sign him to a two-year extension that had a new money average of $25 million? Would you do that tomorrow? Probably, but how much would that reduce his cap hit for 2021? Uh, I've got it up on the site somewhere here on, on, on that. Uh, not much, obviously. No. Uh, Hold on a minute here. Because obviously if I wanted to do that, I would want to get the benefit of extending Ben, but also get the, hopefully get the benefit of being able to retain, for example, a Juju, like what Ben you know, reportedly wants to, to be able to keep those pieces together. Because if you are got the rest of the roster and you just have Ben, then you're probably not going to really get much return on value on that extension. Uh, let's see. Raw straight maximum pay cut. Uh, faux uh, extension with avoidable years uh, with some new money. Uh, top of the market regular extension, which wouldn't be the case. Middle of the market. Uh, I uh, hear, I boy, I I really did do a good job on this, didn't I? <laughs> you did. Uh, middle mm-hmm. of the market extension might be something that interests Roethlisberger in 2021. Should he have a mediocre 2020 season, below is a, a quickly put together two year extension for Roethlisberger that equates to a third. Okay, I I, I did this uh, with. Uh, let's see with. Uh, 
I did this assuming that he got a $30 million new money average, which means $60 million in new money on top of the $19 million remaining on his old, old contract. The example includes a $32 million signing bonus, bonus for Roethlisberger and a 2021... Total cash flow of a little over $33 million. Using the example below that I put together, Roethlisberger's 2021 cap charge would decrease by $8.175 million. Only $32 million mm. would be fully guaranteed with virtually $57 million of it practically guaranteed. A March 2022 restructure could then be performed to free up roughly another $11 million in cap space if it's needed and if the team is confident confident that Roethlisberger uh, uh, will play out uh, the entire deal. So this example, which you, once again, I wrote this up, uh, man, I, I hate to, I hate to pat my own back here, man, but uh, I wrote this up in August 23rd, 2020, and it's never been more relevant than it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this, once again, this would be a $30 million new money average, which means you're not totally disrespecting Roethlisberger. Uh, and this such a two year extension would would once again lower uh, would decrease his 2021 cap charge by 8.175 million dollars. Right. Is that something so that's, not so hardly anything? Well, I mean, eight million dollars puts Juju back in the picture for you. And, oh, you said and, eight. You said one point eight. I'm sorry. That, no, it, no, no, no. Eight, 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 eight point one seven five million decrease. Okay, so that is, yeah, that could put a juju in the play for sure. And potentially uh, help you afford maybe a little bit of that Cam Sutton uh, uh, re-sign if that's the way that okay. they choose to go. I mean, definitely eight, let me, let me tell you, eight, uh, decreasing his cap hit by $8.175 million will easily afford the first year cap hit of juju. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you got a lot of other stuff you got to figure out. You know, there's probably going to be some cap casualties, and then also this assumes that 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 the cap comes in pretty damn near being flat. You know, uh, on, on top of it here, but you know, it, it once again, would assuming that's it's a lot to assume, mm -hmm. but get getting you know, let's assume that the cap comes in some somewhere cl closer to 198.2 million dollars. Okay. Uh, that that's the starting point there. And assuming Ben would sign off on, on a two year extension uh, with uh, that had thirty million dollar new money average, like like in the example I have here, and you were able to low hit lower decrease his cap hit in two thousand twenty one by right at eight million, is that something that you would highly consider right now? And and Juju resign, and I guarantee you, I guaranteed you that Juju would resign. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would do. I mean, there aren't a lot of great answers here. I think you're, the two, two best articles I've read on Ben's future is, is the one that, that you're referencing that you wrote back in August. And I know Joel Corey recently wrote an article on Ben's future and kind of laid out all the options there. And there isn't you know an easy button answer there. But I think what you're laying out there, given those circumstances, to make a very short answer, yes, I would do that. I mean, all Joel Corey's part. article, I mean, I, and, and I have the utmost respect for Joel Corey, but all it is is a, a condensed version of mine. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, yours is the one I go to the most, but I, I just happen to read his as well and lays out all the options as yours, yours does. But, um, yeah, to answer your question directly, I, it's probably what I would do. All right. Now, look, you could also I have a blow market regular extension with uh, with new 2021. Uh, let's see. It says want to hope that Roethlisberger ultimately signs an extension with a new money average with a low of around 25 million. OK, so I did include this in here. First, good luck with that. I wrote second, if, if he were to agree to such a, a, a low new money average extension his 2021 take is still likely to be at least 29 million, uh, which would uh, uh, mean giving the quarterback a signing bonus of at least uh, almost 28 million such a two-year extension with those raw starting figures would still result uh, in Roethlisberger having a 2021 cap charge of uh, a little more than 32.6 million a savings of 8.6 million dollars in cap space in 2021 so anywhere between 25 million dollar to 30 million dollar new money average for Roethlisberger uh, on a two-year extension would result in a cap savings of uh, between eight 
8.7 ish. How's that? Okay. Yeah. And then you could definitely, like you said, get Juju under that I mean, maybe work towards somebody else. So that might be the best approach because you get Ben back, you get Juju back. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't hate that. I, I, I guess the, the question that go, go, goes back to the question here is, is do you think Ben has what it takes to play past 2021 at a competitive level? Yeah. Uh, that's the million dollar question is, and does he want to commit to that now? Or does he want to just literally take this year by year, which I think is kind of maybe his approach right now where he just wants to to see how it is as he gets to 39. Um, that might be, that might be the bigger obstacle than does the team want to do it? Uh, The question of does Ben want to do it may be the bigger question. I mean, uh, before the season started, I thought there was a pretty de- – assuming that his arm was okay and all like that, I thought there was a pretty decent chance that he that uh, that Ben would sign an, an, an extension this offseason. Now I'm not so – you know, uh, I can see this thing going <laughs> one of about six ways right <laughs> now. Yeah, you know? right. And, yeah, it's a, it's, that's why I said it's a more interesting question because I think we know that Ben's going to come back in 2021. Team wants him. Ben wants to return. It's a done deal. The question is just his future and how does the team approach that, uh, I think, is the, the much more interesting question. All right. Uh, def- definitely we'll know by the middle of March uh, how we went down that right. rabbit hole. But I, I think it's worth <laughs> exploring. I mean, I, and I, I really think, too, if Ben comes to you and tells you, look, 2000, uh, to, in order to get to the faux extension type, type deal it, 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 you know where you add in those false years and you get the maximum benefit of uh of, of decreasing his cap hit uh you know as, as as much as you possibly can then you have to get to really to some type of agreement with ben that that uh 2011 i mean 2021 is it for him mm-hmm. yeah if you go that route i think that's what it's saying so i don't know i mean the steelers have never done a contract like that before right with the Avoidable years. Oh man, I I don't want to say never. There's no a long recent time. Exi- yeah, no no obvious example that comes to mind of them doing something like that. Obviously, Ben's situation is unique, and maybe you throw some of the rules out the window. But right, I mean, I, you know, it, it's something that you have to explore, though. If indeed, you know, uh, did, 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 did this this was his final. You know, he agreed that this was going to be his final year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I understand that. So, any other thoughts there with the report about Ben's return? Just does 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 this report, I guess, whatever you want to call it, change your thoughts at all about the potential for Juju's return, or or not really? I I think once again, as we move forward into the off season, we talk about free agency here. A lot of it's going, uh, not so. Look, his market value's set. Okay, and his market value is 16 million floor. I firmly believe. I'll be shocked if his if if the deal that 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 Juju signs, whoever it's with, if the new new money average is less than 16 million. I I think you agree with that, mm-hmm. right? I do. All right. So the only question is, is can the Steelers get themselves into a cap situation where they can afford a first year cap hit of let's say between somewhere between six and a half to eight million dollars because that's roughly what 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 juju's first year cap hit in 2021 would be and the only way to have to to give a better answer or, or prediction to that is is having a firmer understanding of what the 2021 nfl number is and we just we just don't mm-hmm. it's just too early right now to know that right and we're still not going to know that for a little bit longer right but but once again and i've said this all along and, and this just is just you know following along with the the, the people that I follow along with. Uh, 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 and it's all speculation right now, and it's my gut speculation on top of it is that the cap number that that the NFL and the NFLPA are going to do everything possible uh, to to make to to ensure that this 2021 cap number comes in. Right near damn near flat as 2020, which 198.2 million dollars. Now, if indeed that's that that's what happens, if this number comes in, and there are going to be a lot of people wearing egg on their face, man, right? Because where where you look at the stair, I guess a good time to kind of segue uh, right now because go tell tell the people what happened transaction wise the last couple of days. Yeah, the Steelers signed two more players to futures contracts. Those were Trey Edmonds, the running back who got waived initially and then uh, uh, kind of circling back to Pittsburgh, 
and offensive tackle Jerron Jones, who spent the entire season on the practice squad until there was a late season uh, injury there. So those were the two offseason ads. All right. Now, with, with, with the futures contracts and everything right now, uh, with, with the players that they have under contract right now, they have 50 in total. All right. Uh, for, 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 for 2021. Uh, obviously, you work off of a rule of 51, so it's not hard to put a minimum salary in there as the final 51 spot and get yourself mocked up pretty good to a current rule of 51 number right now. And then also you mm-hmm. consider the fact that this team had almost $5 million in 2020 salary cap space that, 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 that they can, that they will roll over into 2021. You look at the dead money list that they have right now, which is uh, uh, almost three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars from uh, from from 2020. You 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 put all that into the blender there, and I believe you come out at around. Uh, if you throw in all those numbers in together there, hold on here. I want to make sure I, I, I get the right math here. Uh, I've got it at, uh, let's see, 209 with the rollover. And then uh, I have to do the math here. Uh, uh, again, I don't, I don't have it all added up correctly here. But you're only a couple of restructures away from being cap compliant to 198 a $0.2 million deal. Okay. Right. So in other words, if that, uh, what I'm getting at here is, is work. Now look, do you, Hey, do you still have work to do? Uh, when, mm-hmm. when, uh, 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 past just two restructures of Cameron Hayward and Stefan to it. Absolutely. You do because you, you still have to accommodate a full, which we think is going to probably going to be another 16 man practice squad. You have to accommodate, uh, the, uh, the draft class post roster, uh, displacement. You still have to have another $10 million free cap space going into once the regular season starts. But all those things are after, after the fact you want to first get yourself to where 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 you're cap compliant correct and mm-hmm. yeah and basically what what i'm getting at here is all these you know we hear it at year in and year out right all the doom all the cap doom day sayers right oh this team is just high. this is it the 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 can has finally landed where they can't kick it no more uh kind mm-hmm. of deal so but what i'm getting and i'm not i'm not saying that you can't potentially get to that spot but you're dealing with such a great how can people talk in absolutes right now when it comes to the Steelers cap when they don't even know what the 2021 cap number is obviously if it's 170 if it comes in at the floor at 175 million dollars it it there's no way to sugarcoat and put lipstick on that pig at mm-hmm. all all right but but, 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 however, comma, 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 what if the number comes in at $198.2 million? Yeah, it changes the landscape dramatically for Pittsburgh and for the rest of the league and certainly would help them out quite a bit as you just laid out. So that number is going to be – that is the biggest number to watch for whenever it comes in in the next six weeks or so. Uh, what that salary cap number is going to be, and you just hope the higher the number, the better for Pittsburgh. All right, uh, uh, let let me rephrase once again here where I have this team at. I would have this team at roughly almost. Uh, I just reconfigured things here real quick here. The Steelers mock rule of fifty one number right now. All right, based on if the cap remained flat at one hundred ninety eight point two million dollars, they would only be eleven million dollars over the cap over that number. All okay. right. So you're uh, you are a uh, Cameron Hayward, Stefan Tuit, normal rest- restructure away of the both those guys uh, being under the cap. Period, and that's with Ben Roethlisberger's and, contract well, as is. I was going to say that's with Ben untouched, right? Even with his current situation. Right. Right. So. What what I just want to throw it out there because I have a feeling that I'm going to be requiring a a back padding here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll schedule. <for> it. <laughs> I would like to schedule myself a back padding here. Uh, mm-hmm. 
be, once again, if it comes in one hundred ninety eight point two million, and 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 even if they didn't do anything with Roethlisberger's contract, you're a couple restructures away from from not being in awful shape. I and mean, you throw in a couple of roster cuts on, you know, a couple cap casualties on on top of it. Boom! Voila! All of a sudden, what 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 will the media narrative song be? Oh, praise praise Omar Khan! No, it's just it's numbers, man. You know, it's numbers. Mm-hmm. So, just if you're listening to this right now, yes, they're going to have a lot of work ahead of them. But for for people to come out and, and, and paint this cataclysmic cap situation right now for the Steelers in 2021, be careful with taking that as is because of the sheer fact that, you know, normally this time of year already, we know that the cap's going to go up, you know, X percent. Potentially we have mm-hmm. a, a firmer working number right now. We don't, we you know, the, every, you know, it depends on who you ask. Oh, it's going to be 175 million. Oh, it's going to be flat. Uh, that, so don't get yourself in cataclysmic mode right now when it comes to the Steelers cap. Does that make sense? It does, but if it does come in hypothetically at the 175 at the floor, then as you mentioned, Pittsburgh's in a deep, deep hole. Exactly. In fact, based on the current rule of 51 that I have right now, you're looking at, I, I believe, 34.1 mm. over versus t- almost 11 over. Right. So right. that that I mean, that's obviously quite 20, you know, 20. Yeah. Uh, you know. How do you even get cap compliant if you're Pittsburgh, if you're 34 million in the hole? What steps do you, do you even take? Well, like, what would I don't know if you have a, a, a if you have it mapped out, but I'm curious what that would look like. Uh, it, a, you have to do something with obviously you have to do something with Ben's contract, I think. Uh, right. well, uh, what is that? Something. Well, I mean, that, 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 that's the, that's the, yeah, that's the avoidable years and get the max amount yeah. that you, that, that you can out of that, 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 that's the starting point okay. right there. Uh, then I think you really have to look, I mean, what, what's going to happen with Marquise Pouncey? What's going to happen with, uh, with, 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 with Joe Hayden? Uh, you're going to do re- the, the restructures with, with, with Cameron Hayward is a done, mm-hmm. is, is going to happen. So you're going to save 7 million, a little more than 7 million. I've been I, I predicted that the Cam Hayward uh, restructure is going to happen the moment after that deal got done, all right? Mm-hmm. So there's seven million that you can save in a full restructure uh, with, with with Cameron Hayward this offseason. Go ahead and mark it down. I guarantee you that that's going to happen. Seven million savings there. Then the only other guy that you got to look at is Stephon to it, all right? You're not going to cut him, right? right? You're not going to cut him to save, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, you know the the uh, uh, the you know, his, his $9 million base salary. You're, if you do anything with his contract with stuff on to it, you're going to restructure it and save the $4 million that, that you can save there. You, you yeah, agree? Yeah, I'm still a soup. Right. Well, you said, yeah, if, if you've the caps at 198, you, you, all you have to do is just Hayward to it and that gets you to, to being cap compliant at least. So let's assume they do that at 175. That still leaves you about, what, $23 million to go after you do Hayward into it. Right, right. Then, then you have to, uh, you know, the only other restructures that you could potentially do don't add up to much at all. In fact, the the, the, the highest amount would be someone like Chris Boswell, where you save a little bit over uh, a million, a million yeah, dollars on a full, on, on a full restructure. So then you got to get into, do any of these old guys, do we want to extend, you know, what do you, does David DeCastro still want to play, you know, past, mm-hmm. past, past his final year? Do you, what, ex- what was, to go back to Ben, what was the max that that you could, or what is the reasonable expectation to uh, to create and free up if you do the avoidable years with Ben? Uh, you would, would have to go back to that after I close that out. Uh, here, I'm sorry. Hold, hold, hold on. I just because uh, I want to I want to try to create a decent map here. Okay, so let's say the cap. If it's 198, it, it, the path is a lot easier as you just laid out. You can you can make that work without a whole lot of hassle. If it's 175, you're gonna restructure Hayward. You're gonna restructure to it. You're gonna do those guys regardless where the cap number really comes in. Uh, from there. Ben would be the next thing on the list, and so that you know you're 23 million needing to clear after Hayward into it. What is the avoidable years going to free up for Ben? That's my next question. Uh, let's see. Uh, at expense of having, uh, let's see here, would get uh, 14.34 million dollars is the assuming assuming Ben didn't take any pay cuts. If if Ben did a four year you know a four year extension. 
All right, that 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 would run through 2025 uh, with no new money whatsoever. You're only doing this to create four full voidable years onto this thing. So the base salaries really are irrelevant to this thing. Your main goal is the is to take almost 18 million dollars of the 19 million dollars that he's due. And to be able to, 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 to for, for cap accounting purposes, stretch it out as much as you can there to get the maximum cap savings benefit would would result in uh, $14.34 million in, 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 in savings in 2021. So there's 14.34 plus the other 11 in the restructures of Tuit and, mm-hmm. uh, right? Yeah, so now you need about and, nine and million to get so, caps compliant. Where do right. you get the last nine from? You cut Vance, that saves right. you what five? Right, and you cut uh, Vin, uh, uh, Vince Williams for another four. <laughs> and that that gets you to nine. That gets you to cap compliant. That that gets you roughly roughly to cap compliant. Roughly there, yeah, right, yeah. So that would be the bad, and obviously two very drastic situations. So yeah, that cap number. We talk about numbers and data and stats and everything. The number one number we're gonna look at here, Dave, is that. Or the salary cap is going to come in at right, and and and, and anybody giving you a firm number on that right now is mm-hmm. just they're they're speculating like like the rest of it. So I mean it's it's quite a big gap there, obviously. But once again, I have my gut tells me that uh, it's going to come in closer to the hundred hundred ninety eight point two million, and if it does, then. We're all, we're all the, the look. Once again, they're going to have work to do, but obviously, it's not going to be it's not going to be as cataclysmic as a lot of people are painting mm-hmm. that picture to be right now. Right. Yep. That, that's a great way to frame it. So, you know, doom is on. Doom is there. It's there's potential, but it, it it's not here yet. So let's just wait and see what happens. All right. Um, did did that clear up a lot of that? Uh, you know, what what they could potentially be. Fa- hope, hopefully, people aren't. You know, with their uh, uh, calculators out right now. Hopefully, we explain it mm-hmm. you know, better than that. Yeah, no, I think that's a good discussion, and obviously, one we'll continue to revisit. And once the cap number does come out, then we'll we'll really map out what the the most likely and best path for Pittsburgh is. Right. All right. Uh, where where to? I think we're just kind of doing some housekeeping stuff right now. I mentioned the Edmonds and Jones futures deals. Uh, we do want to mention. Well, well, let's talk about quickly here the NFL Combine. There's no no um, official announcement from the NFL yet, but it's looking like the Combine will look very different than than any year prior, where it's not going to be held in Indy in one central location. It'll kind of be spread out through regional combines and things like that. So. Um, I, I kind of read, read some of the report. I was in the middle of moving while it happened. So I don't know if you read it better than I did, Dave, but it does seem like decentralized is the word they're using to to refer to the combine this year. And, and that makes a lot of sense, especially where we are mm-hmm. right now with the, uh, 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 you know, with uh, the immunization, you know, uh, with, with uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the shots. Pandemic. Oh, yeah, the, the pandemic. and Yeah. Uh, the, you know, look, we're we're just starting the early stages of this and all like that. So, uh, it, it's it's the hard vaccine. To, is that what you were vaccine, looking for? Vaccine. That's it. That's it. Okay. Vaccinated. Va- vaccinations. That's the word I'm looking. That's the big word I'm looking for there. So, uh, so. I, well, you know, all, all that's not going to be solved by the time we get to uh, uh, get to when the combine is supposed to start, which is what's less than six weeks away, right? Seven yeah, weeks it'd away? be almost. Yeah, it'd be like uh, six weeks from now. So yeah, they're they're it's not going to be ready to, for a big event yet. Right. So it's hard to imagine everybody congregating in Indianapolis. And I think, in so many words, that's what mm-hmm. Albert Breer has put out there, and kind of what the loose plan seems to be. And that makes sense. So for the first time, you and I are not going to be glued to a television uh, for for you know obviously. Hopefully, the the the, uh, the the flow of information will still be out there with the heights, weights, and but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be keeping a running spreadsheet this year, and I sure will miss the living hell out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, our 9 a.m. Excel spreadsheets. Right. We love to do. So uh, anyway, hopefully the information at least flows for, for pre-draft purposes there. But uh, outside of that, it uh, yeah, don't look like it's going to be – it looks like it's going to be just a lot of uh, area – Pro days, and really, I think because so many of the the uh, the players train. I think where they say uh, California, Arizona, and Florida, or Texas, mm-hmm. or I, I, maybe Texas. Anywhere that's warm. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
you could have some, I guess, some regionalized, especially when it comes to getting the uh, uh, the the physical and the uh, the the health information. It all goes. It seems mm-hmm. like that's going to be that. Then I w- I would assume, and that's dangerous to do, that you still have kind of the college kind of pro day circuit. And who knows? Maybe they kind of put those in I don't know centralized locations as well. Too. I don't know, but uh, I just don't think we're going to have the uh, the the uh, the normal combine this year. No, and I think, honestly, the 2021 draft will be harder to draft for teams than 2020 because at least in 2020, you had the entire you know, 2019 college football season. You had a, a, a combine, you know, centralized combine at Indy, um, and you at least had the start of pro days. This year, you're not going to really have any of that. Uh, so I think it's going to be even a bigger challenge this year for teams than it was this past year, which was already a, a big challenge to begin with. Okay, and uh, well, one final note, real, real, real quick on, on on the Roethlisberger thing, while while it's on my mind here, just so people aren't aren't too confused here, the max amount of cap savings you can have in 2021 when it comes to Roethlisberger is him either retiring or getting cut, and that's 19 million dollars, right? So, uh, and and and, and this, uh, you'll save 19 million dollars if one of those two things happens. Uh, if you don't think either either one of those two things are happen, and you want to say, well, what's the next max amount of money that they can save? Well, it's just what Alex and I just talked about with the uh, 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 you know, having you know adding on four voidable years onto his contract, and then taking almost uh, 18 million dollars of what he, of that 19 million dollars that he's scheduled to earn, and then turning that into a signing bonus and stretching it out that way there that's the second uh uh easiest way to create caps a large amount of cap space uh with this contract so you know those are the 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 big boy options to clear clear the most amount of cap space there just so we're clear here okay gotcha and so if i can uh, add one thing too to something i mentioned earlier uh chris forrester is going to be the 49ers new offensive line coach john benton who had that job is following uh robert salat to the jets so I guess probably can that Forrester idea that I wrote about. Okay. Uh, when, when, when did that uh, hit the internet? Last night? Yesterday? Uh, no, just like five minutes ago. Oh, the Chris uh, Forrester. From the, Mike Silver. No, no, I'm talking about when, 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 when did you write that article about Chris Forrester? Oh, yeah, it went up. When did it go up? Yesterday morning. Oh, okay. You got a little bit of shelf life out of it. <laughs> yeah, I was considering holding it till Monday. I'm glad I didn't. So I got a bit of time out of it. I mean, if they only knew how many times we write things and had to trash it, right? You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, too too often. Um, anyway, so speaking of the Combine, uh, I do want to mention that our Steelers Depot annual draft profiles will be starting soon. I don't know the exact date when the first one is going to go up, but sooner than later for sure. I have a great team. Added a couple of new guys this year, so really excited to get in the draft stuff. I know I've been working on uh, Alabama center Landon Dickerson to start. I think you've done some stuff on Kyle Pitts, the Florida tight end. But uh, yeah, so look forward to that and hopefully have a whole lot of draft pro- profiles this year for you guys. Uh, yeah, I might beat everybody to the punch this year. I might have a uh, – throughout the day-to-day, I'm, I'm working on – boy, you want to talk about having uh, – you know, we got Brad online now uh, doing a lot of the stat stuff for us and all like that. He can he can instantaneously now pull the play-by-play data for me uh, for any college uh, uh, player that I want, and uh, along with the timestamps and obviously trying to do these these contextualizations like I, I need to do – I need to know when to – play is because uh it, it's an art of kind of putting those things together and part of the part of the art to doing that is digging digging through when when the actual play is happening and matching them up with tape and 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 and, and you know uh, aggregating that stuff is hard well not no more he pushes mm-hmm. a damn button and it spits out you all see the spreadsheet mm-hmm. that, that i got for him here out so now all i got to do is go through the tape and i forget how many total targets that he has there but uh i hope to have uh either today or tomorrow a uh a full uh target contextualization on on on, on kyle pitts there to kick things off nice have you started watching him at all yet or not yet just just Briefly, briefly, no. Okay, so so too soon to, to ask any sort of initial impressions. Of yeah, that. yeah, way, way, way okay. too soon. Uh, ask me about. Uh, ask me on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. I'll have a, a lot better idea. I have a feeling. <laughs> All right, good deal. And people uh, already already ask me, "Was well, he fart? Yo, know, would you trade up? Look, it's got give us time <laughs> to get through some of these guys. You know, I mean, I'm just scratching the surface. I know you are as well, Alex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, Dave, some more odds and ends type thing. And even writing about Deshaun Watson and some of the trade rumors circulating there. I haven't gotten a whole lot of people asking or demanding the Steelers trade for Deshaun Watson. But what is your just evaluation of that situation or just any any thoughts there? I I have gotten some emails on that. And it and, and, and it caught and boy, my time. I couldn't have been better on the timing of this. Right. Uh, I wrote about mm-hmm. it the other day on the 16th, which I think was what uh, Saturday uh, morning. I, I wrote about it. Uh and you consider all this most recent news over the last, I don't know, 48 hours con- concerning Deshaun Watson, I think it's very, very plausible to think that Deshaun Watson has played his last snap with the Houston Texans. All right? Uh, now, I think there's a report this morning that the that the Texans will do a virtual interview with uh, Eric Bieniemy. <laughs> Why that wasn't done <laughs> uh, right out of shoot, I don't know. Obviously, Bieniemy's tied up with the uh, with the Chiefs still right now. That, in my opinion, is the only way whatsoever that you appease uh, Deshaun Watson. Not only do I, I mean, I appease is probably the wrong word. I think it's the right way to go for the Texans. And I think I've, I've said as much right from the get go right here. Eric B should be the next F offensive coordinator, uh, with, with, with the tight, uh, with the Texans period. All right. Now is, is that relationship between the Texans and, and, and Watson already deteriorated, deteriorated enough where it's irre- irreconcilable. Boy, I got that out first time. I don't know how I did that. Yeah, uh, good job. Yeah. Uh, uh, possible. All right. So once again, uh, the biggest thing here, people says, well, the dead money hit uh, that the Texans would hit, yada, yada. There's no way that uh, that that you know they'd be willing to trade them. I think there is, and I think it all comes down to compensa- compensation. Uh, any team at this point, uh, for the most part, could could be able to afford the salaries that go along with Deshaun Watson, and it starts with his uh, 2021 salary of being under 11 million dollars. So, uh, 10.54 million dollars is his salary in 2021. So, I, I a lot of people, a lot of teams can, can can accommodate that, and then really his salary structure from from there on out. And, and 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 roster bonus dates and and all like that is very you know manageable for a team looking for a franchise quarterback if you will uh, there so really it, it, I think it's very 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 plausible that the Texans trade Watson and then it comes down to compensation you know what are they going to require and I and you probably agree with me at a bare minimum you would think it cost a team two first round draft picks and that's at a bare bare minimum right yeah i agree i was talking with a buddy last night we were just talking about what it would take to get to sean watson i said whatever you think the cost is it's more um right. it's going to cost the farm to do it but it's probably worth it and the texans are according to Ian Rappaport, this just came across they are going to interview with eric the enemy today they got a waiver or allowance from the nfl in kansas city to interview the enemy despite casey still being in the playoffs uh but i don't think that's going to appease Watson at this point. I think that relationship appears to be uh, beyond repair. And so I do think that Sean Watson has played his last down in Houston. And I don't know how the Texans screwed up this situation, but they did a great job at screwing this thing up. Yeah, it started with the hire of, uh, of Nick Casario, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I, you know, Should have hired Omar Khan. <laughs> probably. Probably, and then the fact that uh, B enemy's name, if why has it gotten to this point where Deshaun, you know, with, with all this stuff that's been in the media last couple of days, it should have never got to this point, and then now, you know, it, it's it's damage control on the Texans part. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's oh, yeah. go, you know, we we gotta hurry, we gotta get an uh, 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 an interview with with Eric. It, the whole thing smell. Remember what I said a couple uh, a, a couple of podcasts ago. You know what? You just fire Nick. Casario right after you hire him and say, wave the white flag and say, we got this wrong. Uh, uh, let's, let, let, let's do it, do it. But I, I, I really, uh, I really think that they've got this wrong right out of the shoot. I think Deshaun Watson knows they've got it wrong. I think it's been the last straw with him and I can really see him being traded. No, I don't think he's going to get traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The only way that you make that work, could you, could you make it work with the Steelers? Sure you could, but it starts with here's here's the path that it, it takes to get Deshaun Watson in a Steelers uniform. Okay, you cut Ben Roethlisberger, 
you change the door codes at the team facility. Okay, <laughs> that, that's the first step right there. All right. Then you then you free up the 19 million dollars. Second, you need to have some inclination that the cap, you know, uh, either, either you get with Deshaun and say, look, we we, we, we want to take that uh, uh, nine million, almost you know, a little bit more than nine million of that 10 million that you're due in 2021. We want to turn it around and give that to you as a signing bonus. OK. So you lower that cap hit, uh, 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 you know, a couple million more that way by by obviously doing that that way. You need the the the, the cap to come in pretty damn close to 198.2 million dollars. All right, and then oh yeah, you got to give something to the Texans to get Deshaun Watson. And what does that look like? It probably looks like at least two first rounders, maybe three. Right. Yeah, my my guess is for the compensation is three firsts and probably something else, maybe either another pick or, or a player, player or something like that. Yeah, but I think three firsts plus something is going to be the benchmark for Deshaun Watson. All right, do you do you uh, we we we've gotten past the fight. Let, let's assume we could get past the financial situation, which I think they could. Okay, uh, I, I mean, heck, you, you're going to go from nineteen million dollar cap charge on, on on Ben Roethlisberger to Really, you could. I mean, you could really get that that 2021 cap hit down on on Deshaun Watson, you know, quite a bit, you know, by by turning you know nine million dollars of that ten million dollars into a signing bonus there with him. So let's assume that you could get past the financial situation here with it, which a lot of teams can do. All right. Mm-hmm. Do you see the Steelers giving up the 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 draft pick haul to get him? <sighs> Um, no, it just, and this feels is so after, this is after crazy. cutting Roethlisberger. <laughs> yeah. It just, it feels like we've gotten into such a weird territory, Madden territory that I can't even imagine that scenario happening. Uh, I, I love Deshaun Watson. I think he's, I think he's like a, a top three quarterback in football, to be honest with you. But I, it's just hard to even wrap my mind around all those events taking place. Right. But people wanted me to address it. So I addressed it. Yeah. You, you, we're, you we're could, it's, it's not so crazy from a financial right. situation overall. It's just the whole compensation thing of it. The Steelers would have to come off of a lot of draft capital and, and you know, man, I'm a, I'm a huge Watson fan. I, you mm-hmm. know, I, I, I tweeted about him several times throughout this uh, season here, but just the, the fact that what it would cost the Steelers to get up to, to get him uh, the way they'd have to go about just throwing Roethlisberger to the curb. I, I just don't see, I don't see it happening. So there we address yeah, the that. math. <laughs> yeah. The math works, but I think everything else doesn't work with trying to envision such a scenario so there you go but we'll see what happens so you do you agree that watson is will be a tech no longer be a texan has played his last down in houston yeah here's here here, here's what i wrote at the end of that article here is uh, so do i think uh so do i think watson will be traded this offseason i think the odds of that happening are good and no i do not think watson will be traded to the steelers this offseason uh and especially if roethlisberger comes back in 2021 agree i think that's well said all right, Dave, a couple more things to wrap up here. Uh, divisional weekend just happened. We have the Bills and the Chiefs competing in the AFC and the Buccaneers and the Packers in the NFC. I, I got to watch some of the divisional weekend. Didn't get to watch all of it because of the move. Drew Brees, though, seems like he's played his final down in the NFL, going to retire after a great career. Uh, the Chiefs hang on despite losing Patrick Mahomes to that concussion. But Tom Brady advances. You have A.B. and Levy and Bell in the in their title games, uh, despite not contributing much to their teams. So a uh, lot to talk about there. Uh, the four teams left, uh, the final four teams were were in the season-ending top five of the adjusted net yards for passing attempt. Really? Differential stat. Right. So wow. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, so don't think uh, Justin net yards per passing attempt uh, stat doesn't matter. The differential there, the, the Packers were number one to end the regular season. The Bills were number two. The Chiefs were number three. The Saints were, were and, and, and Buccaneers were tied, essentially, if you don't take the decimal out, at, at number four at 1.8 there. So yeah. uh, passing offense matters and... This shouldn't be a shock. Passing offense matters, and how you defend the pass matters in in, in the <laughs> NFL. Uh, people are probably not dropping their phones right now, but uh, 
it just it, 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 you know further it lets you know that you know the that this the stat still holds a lot of water there now let's get back to uh, the adjusted net, you know the the, the uh, defensive number that that I talk about with the adjusted net yards for passing attempt number and then the magic num the magic turnover number that 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 you've written about for a couple years now you throw those all into the blender right now uh, and, and it tells you that either the Bills or the Buccaneers are going to win the Super Bowl, and that and that's been that that way since the playoffs started. There, so we've just eliminated a couple. I think the other two teams in that mix, according to those numbers, would have been the Saints and the Steelers, and obviously both those teams uh, have have been eliminated now. So if you want both of our numbers to kind of work in concert together, Alex, uh, we're rooting for the Bills or the Buccaneers to win the Super Bowl this year. All right, there you go. Uh, we'll see. Um, it'll be a couple of good games this weekend, though. Uh, what do you think about the forward the football through the end zone rule? Yeah, coming, I know. Coming out of that so game. Much, right, the, the Browns scheme. I mean, that's what Higgins – because I didn't even see it because of, of the move. He, he dove for the goal line and, and lost the football and rolled out of the end zone for a touchback, correct? Yeah, there, there, there was a hit by the, uh, by, by the, uh, by the chief safety uh, over there towards the side. He was, he was stretching out. Uh, there was sort of, and, and some people are kind of focusing now, was that more leading with the crown of the helmet penalty that they missed there? Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, he, uh, Higgins dope for the end zone. Uh, Sorensen uh, uh, dove at the same time. Uh, you know, they, uh, they, uh, you know, obviously the, the ball comes loose and it goes through the back of the end zone and it's a touchback. Uh, mm-hmm. It goes, goes from a situation where the, the, you know, look, I mean, the Browns only lost by less than a touchdown there. Uh, obviously a, a touchdown on that drive probably may, is a meaning, meaningful part of that game. Uh, and all uh, should it, uh, long story short, should the league look at this rule now? I'm not as up in arms as other people are. I'm not opposed to it, but I think ball security is paramount and ball security on the goal line is paramount. So I think you can get penalized for, for losing it in such a crucial moment. I don't I don't hate it as much as some people do. I don't either. And there's a reason Bill Belichick, I think, teaches his skill position people to don't do that. Mm-hmm. Unless it is fourth and goal or end of the game, you don't extend over the goal line. Right. Uh, for the sure, sure fact that what happened in that game with, with the Browns could happen there. So I think – do you – I don't think you. I don't. I've never been a huge fan. Look, you go back to the old uh, 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 Xavier Grimble play, right? A couple of years ago mm-hmm. against uh, against yeah. Denver. There, same, almost same identical situation there. Uh, one, one, it happening in the playoffs there. Even you know, do you change the rule to accommodate one magnified play? And I think the answer to that is no. Is well, you feel? to be fair, most most a lot of rule changes happen because of one magnified play. Sure, that is usually the catalyst for those things. Is that the right approach to go about it? Probably not, but that is the the reason for a lot of these changes. Anyway, that's going to be the huge uh, one of the huge topics of, of conversation on talk radio, mm-hmm. I'm sure today and 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 er, early on this week here, along with you know whether or not he you know if there should have been a penalty. Uh, called there for for leading with the helmet and all like that uh, on top of it. Uh, the rest of it, uh, boy, Breeze. Uh, I, I you know obviously I, it's obvious that that Breeze is probably done at this point. There he didn't play uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, what a career he has had, right? Mm-hmm. Forty forty two years old, coming off that that shoulder surgery that you know or arm surgery, whatever it was that people thought was going to you know basically stop his career and uh, had the rib injury career. this year and yeah. Yeah, first ballot Hall of Famer for sure. Uh, right, and uh, 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 Michael Thomas zero catches in that game. Who would have thought that? Yeah, he had talked about guys that had rough seasons. He had a really tough year with injuries and just poor play and and all that. So so yeah, but uh, yeah, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers they're they're advancing. All right, what what do you think about on the offensive side? What's your early reaction? What what do you think about the uh, the uh, Ravens' effort against the uh, against the Bills? Yeah, it was just crazy to see the Ravens' offense completely shut down. I thought Buffalo had a great game plan to come out to limit Lamar, to limit that run game overall, and uh, just a defensive battle, which I didn't know if I expected that much of a defensive battle in that game. But Josh Allen's ascension has just been, and, and I haven't examined it closely enough, but I just wonder what was the secret to the change from you know his first and second years, which were pretty quiet, 
and some controversy. Is he the right guy? Was this the right pick to a third year that puts him in, in legitimate MVP conversation? I wonder what switch it was that flipped for him to, to make him the quarterback he is currently. Boy, he sure looks like he's upper echelon now, doesn't he? Got the mm-hmm. arm strength, yeah. uh, can 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 run with the football as well, too. Uh, on the flip side, you've got a guy that can run with the football in Lamar Jackson, and you really – you really got a question. I mean, not. I've been kind of saying it for a little while now, but hey, and I think the Ravens have got themselves in a peculiar situation here. Uh, you're almost locked into giving uh, uh, Jackson top tier money and, and huge extension, right? Huge guarantee, mm-hmm. you know, deal. But do you really want? Is, is it slant? Is it? Is it even? Is it open for discussion? You know. You know what I'd do with um, it right now, and I know it wouldn't be a popular decision. I would, I would, him. I would, no, I would trade him. I, I you would trade him. I would seriously consider to take take whatever haul I could get for him right now. Mm. I don't envy them being on the cusp of having to give him, and they almost are trapped into it, giving him that 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 mega deal. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to. I don't know if they really have a choice in this matter. I don't. I don't see the trade happening. I know you're just kind of you know spitballing what you would do, but um, yeah, I think they do have to add some more weapons. I don't want to use that as a as a crush for Jackson, but I do think there's been a lot of criticism of of the pass game of the receivers of some of the the scheme and things that have have been limiting. So I think there's still work to do for them to at least add a you know other receiver opposite of Hollywood Brown. Well, look, obviously. You don't have to do anything with Lamar Jackson this year, uh, going in 2021, other than picking up his fifth year option, right? Right. Okay. So uh, it's a no brainer that they're going to pick up his fifth year option for 2022, correct? Yes. Okay. Now the now the question becomes: Is Lamar? If you're Lamar Jackson and his agent right now. Do you demand that the Ravens give you the deal right now? Because he's all, he's only scheduled, and I know he's probably got endorsements and all like that. All right, but he's only scheduled to earn one point, a little over one point seven million dollars, and he's been the MVP. Mm-hmm. He's had him obviously in the playoffs. I mean, is there any way whatsoever that you let your client play for one point seven five, one one point seven seven million dollars in two thousand twenty one? Well, I don't know how far you want to take it when you say demand. I mean, are we talking holdout or something like that? But I do think you you strongly push for it as much as possible. All right, I I agree. Uh, I think that's going. I think at some point you're going to hear. I'm not. I you know. I don't want to play for 1.7 million dollars in mm-hmm. 2021, even though contractually it says he should have to. All right. Right. Uh and then that gets back into the uh, the the idea of of, of 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 the Ravens almost being forced to give him that mega mega deal. And look, it would be a behoove him anyway because the, the further the longer that you wait, the the the, the meter's probably running on him anyway. I just mm-hmm. getting back to it, I it, I I don't envy the Ravens being in this situation for the sheer fact that I worry about his passing ability. Not not his running ability. Yeah. I never have worried about sure. that because that guy can that guy can eighty yard home run. you. we've seen it. I mean, uh, he is dangerous. Uh, extended to play. I just I wonder how he's going to develop if, if he can develop more as a passing quarterback moving forward. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the Ravens' offseason plan is. Maybe add another weapon or two. Um, and that offensive line obviously took a hit too when when they lost Ronnie Stanley in that first Steelers game. And I don't know if they ever completely recovered from that either. All right. All right, Dave, any other thoughts on Divisional Weekend, or we can get some reader emails and close out today's show? Yeah, yeah, I guess we can move on to uh, to, to the emails here. Uh, I got one from Ashley Lawson here, a good one to start with here. End of season awards, most improved player, most underrated player, and biggest disappointment. I think we should throw rookies out of this, by the way, right? Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can, we can throw rookies out. All right. So most Some improved book. player for the Steelers, non-rookie in, in 2020. Hmm. <laughs> most improved player. And you have an answer? You're I've got, I have my mind. I don't know. I, I, I haven't given it a lot of thought, man. It, does Tyson Aluelu qualify for that? Yeah, I know. I know we've referenced him a ton as a guy that we didn't we, we we knew could play well and had a good 2019, but I don't know if we expected him to play this well in 2020. Um, so yeah, so Terrell Edmonds, does him is it yeah. between him and Edmonds in that 
a lot of I was people thinking were shaking also their Cam head. Sutton. I think Cam Sutton too. I mean, I think he played well in 2019, but again, took it to another level in 2020. Anybody else that would that would be in the most improved player? Uh, Vance bounced back. Not that I would put him at the top, but Vance did have a better season than he did last year. Um, I might I might go Cam Sutton. I, I, I might land on Cam Sutton for that answer. All right, most underrated player. Yeah, we're gonna think you can kind of put some of the same names we just mentioned right. with 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 Alu Alu. Um, Sutton, you could throw out there. Spillane, does he qualify for that? Maybe. I mean, you could put him for maybe most improved. I don't know if underrated. I think I, I don't know if he would quite fit that. Um, when you think of most I don't know, underrated, I feel like this are kind of similar. Most underrated player on, on, on the Steelers for 2020, you automatically got to go defensive side of the ball, right? Or uh, no, you don't have. I don't know if you have to. I yeah. think Villanueva is still underrated by the fan base. Um, I do too. I, but I, we're we're going to lose that. We're going to lose that argument <laughs> with with people listening yeah. to this. I, I've I've almost yeah. given up on it because people just they 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 don't watch the tape is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I I, I might I might go Tyson Aliwalu for my most uh, underrated player. Biggest disappointment for 2020. Hmm. Biggest disappointment. Does Deontay have to, to be this- in there? Because of the drops and just, uh, I mean, he... the drops are frustrating, but he still made a lot of big plays. I mean, he still improved on every single number. Did uh, Castro I don't think... figure in there? Yeah, yeah, I think, the, and I understand it's probably a health component to that, but I think the Castro might because I mean that that week seventeen game against Cleveland. I mean, he was terrible in that that last Browns game in the regular season. Um, so even understanding it's probably an injury component. Yeah, I might go to Castro. Does Ulysses Gilbert figure into that at all? I mean, uh, it's just kind of one of those, you know, if you get something, that's great. If not, then, then you live with it, too. I mean, I, I was disappointed in the injury. seemed like he's never going to escape the injury bug. But I, it's hard to call him a disappointment because how much were you really counting on him in the first place? All right. Uh, Christopher Byham writes in Ben's autonomy. I've been listening for about eight years now and enjoy your an, an analysis immensely. Thank you and hope you have time to answer my question. Would Canada look like the new hire? How does this affect Ben's autonomy? I think you both agree. He called a lot of plays last year is part of the new OC's job to be reigning in Ben a bit. Do you think this will affect the hurry up Ben has gone to when things needed a spark? How do you think Ben will take it? Thanks to keep up the good work. Congrats on a new house, Alex from Chris. Thank you. Um, I, I don't think it's going to change those elements too much. I don't think regardless of who the OC was, it was going to affect Ben's autonomy. I think you have to recognize the quarterback you have, and I'm sure Canada does, and, and the success that Ben's had was going no huddle and tempo. And even if Canada doesn't like it, Ben can still dictate that stuff on the field anyway. So I don't know if it's going to change that particular thing very much. No, I think that you you hope that you don't get into a situation where you come out at halftime where you have to go empty and Ben, ben has to do that uh, – what we view is mm-hmm. call every what we view is drawing up the plays in the sand. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, for sure. Right. But I think Ben will still have all those capabilities. Ben's still going to do what Ben wants to do, right? <laughs> right. Is exactly. there going to be any reigning Ben in this time? I guess is the question. I mean, I'm not entirely sure exactly what that how you define that and and, and you, you'll you'll that. know it when you see it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think just ideally, as you said, you just hopefully get in those situations less where you feel like you have to go no huddle and tempo and let Ben run the show because whatever your game plan was wasn't working. So I think if you just do that, if you improve your run game, you start faster, you just naturally limit some of those circumstances. So I I don't know if there's an intent to rein Ben in, but I think you just hope to have more offensive success so you don't have to put everything on his shoulders as often as they did in 2020. All right, Lenny writes in, Dave, after watching these games this weekend, I sure realized how inferior our our line is compared to all eight teams that played this weekend. Even if we invest in free agency and focus the draft on, uh, do you think we can realistically turn our pitiful running game around in one season? Lenny and Cleveland. Uh, look, it's going to get, it can't help, but get, get better. <laughs> I, don't, I think <laughs> uh, at, at this point here, uh, but there's, there, it's still, there, there's a lot of elements to it, right? Uh, Alex, it's the offensive line. It's the running backs. It's the, uh, the motions. There's a lot of elements that, that, that need to improve. So, uh, I think a new offensive line coach will help. I think 
think uh, I, inevitably you're going to see different pieces on this line. Uh, at least one, more than likely two or three in in, in total, depending on what happens with, 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 with Marquise Pouncey there. Uh I, I, you know, you're going to have a problem, you know, diff, I don't, I can't see James Conner being coming back and being the, uh, the bell cow, even if, uh, Benny Stell probably going to have some role in that, but uh, there's going to be a lot of fungibility to it as well. I, I, my short answer to this question is I think the running game will get better just because I wrapped my head around how it can get worse. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's an uphill climb, and as you said, there's so many things that have to be addressed, but I think you can make you know significant leaps in just year to year. I think you look at a lot of examples for teams that have had bad run games. Things can change pretty quickly in a, in a year if you if you change a couple of the pieces. So, um, And again, this run game doesn't have to be top five in football. It just have to be average even and just good situationally, and that's good enough for, for the way this offense is built. So I think can they get to that, that level I just described? Certainly. Uh, I think they can do that even in just one year. Will they do it? Who knows? But I think it's certainly it's possible. Uh, let's see here. Lee Green, Greenspan writes, and I'm, I've seen numerous times in the playoffs quarterbacks converting third or fourth and one by sneaking it. Why don't the Steelers run these more, especially <laughs> since we struggle so much in those situations? We haven't run them with the last couple of coordinators. So if the issue is Ben doesn't want to run them, why not just Dobbs and have him uh, run them considering we we've seen his success running and being physical. Thanks Lee and Toronto. A Lee, uh, Lee, a, uh, first and foremost, you're not just going to address Josh Dobbs. If he's your number three quarterback, just for a potential one or two quarterback sneaks, a, 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 a game, uh, obviously if he won your second, if he, if he's your second number two quarterback on a depth chart, then obviously you, you get into the, the potential of doing something like that. I don't know what the deal is with Roethlisberger and, and, and quarterback sneaks. He's, he's said in the, in the past that he has the ability to, to call his own number. Does he not want to? Uh, I don't know, but there's obviously something there that is preventing Ben from doing quarterback sneaks as much as probably he should potentially be doing quarterback sneaks, if that makes sense. Alex? Mm -hmm. No, I think that, I think that's fair, but I, I get more frustrated just for this team's inability to convert, you know, third and one, fourth and one with the calls they do make as opposed to why don't they run quarterback sneaks. I don't I think whatever you call third and one, you should be more than capable of picking it up. And this team has been the worst in football doing so the last two years. That that frustrates me more than just the fact of, OK, why don't they call quarterback sneaks? Sure, but uh, there, uh, there's been instances where probably we should have seen a few more quarterback sneaks over the years. Yeah. Correct? Well, I mean, we've seen zero over the last two years, so certainly I think that you can argue that. And I, and I don't know why it's not, you know, part of the the playbook or why it doesn't get called. Um, I'm and not why Ben just it. doesn't say the hell with it and do that's it himself? Good. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's fair too. So I don't know. It's a good question. I uh, I don't have a good answer for you. All right, Michael Smith writes in, guys, the Steelers have ranked 31st, 29th, and 32nd in rushing yards per game over the last three years. Where would you rank their collective running game talent? Offensive line plus tight end plus running back over that span. Uh, were, were they really the least talented group in the league, or is there a chance of significant improvement with coaching change, even without personnel change that are sure to come? Thanks for the great Steelers coverage. I highly recommend the ad-free subscription to everyone. Thank you for that, Michael in York, PA. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, you just you can't help but go results bias here when you look at offensive line, tight end, and running back o o over that span. James Conner is not the answer. We know that now. Period. Yeah, right. Um, I think you want to get a more dynamic playmaker type back. I think he was still the best back that they've had over that over that span, but it hasn't been good enough for sure. Offensive line. Uh Obviously played a role. DeCastro was not DeCastro this year. Pouncey's really been the same Pouncey he's been, and that's not, you know. Uh, look, what, what was the one key piece that they lost this season, really, technically? And that's uh, uh, Ramon Foster, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe not so quick to run Ramon Foster out of town there, you know? Uh, 
Villanueva's never going to be known as a, 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 never has and never will be known as a great run blocker. Just not good out in space and and, and, and all like that. The tight ends, I've talked about it for, for you know, I obviously talked about it a lot when, when they brought Eric Gibron in. That's not a guy that you want to do a lot of run blocking with. You want to avoid put him in situations where you're having a base block a damn defensive end down in the goal line. That's stupid. We saw that blow up in their face more than once this season. And Vance McDonald's not the blocking tight end he once was when uh, his first or second year uh, with the Steelers there. Was he a little bit better this year? Yeah, but uh, he's not the same guy either. Uh, none of them are Matt Spath, all right, by any stretch of imagination. That includes Kevin Radar. Uh, so it's an element of a lot of it there. It's the offensive line, tight end, running back. Probably the coaching obviously can be better. However, come, I don't think you just take this same group and bring in a different offensive line coach and expect much change, right? No, you can't just assume that'll be the only thing that is the magical cure that fixes it. There's not one singular thing to change that's going to transform this group. I do think that'll help a, a lot because when you've had these last two years of you know poor combo blocks and linebackers running free at the second level, that's blown up so many plays, just basic communication problems. It seemed to be more of a technical thing than than just a, a physical thing, but there is that component to it as well. So you have to add a new O-line coach, add a new running back, add a new offensive lineman or two, and hopefully get this thing going in the right direction. Because to answer the question, yeah, the talent has been below average to poor over these last three seasons. Sean Schaefer writes in, Morning, guys, with the opening at offensive line coach, why hasn't Alan Fanica's name been brought up? He was a name that got thrown around to replace Munchak, but haven't heard his name as a possible hire. Thoughts? Um, he I'm was, sure what, that, he's I'm, been I'm, in I'm, some camps with yeah, and I'm not What's totally that? sure maybe that's what Fanica wants to do. I think that was part of the, maybe his exploration, uh, explore, exploration of maybe potentially doing it. Uh, but do we know for sure that Alan Fanica wants to be a uh, offensive line coach? That's A. Right. B, uh, sometimes you stand in a car. It, I mean, stand in a garage. It don't necessarily make you a car, right? Uh just because you're a great offensive lineman doesn't mean you're going to necessarily be an offensive line coach. I'm not saying that that's the case with Fanica, but I would think at this point, the next, the, the general progression, if, if Alan Fanica would want to be an NFL offensive line coach would be a, to be an assistant offensive line coach full time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not even sure what Fanica's doing these days. I know he had an internship with what Pittsburgh one summer or spring and, you know, it's done a little bit of stuff with, with coaching, but as you said, you know, just because you're a great player doesn't always translate into being a, gr- a great coach. There's several examples of that. And also, it just, you know, if you're a player, do you want to put in the time and dedication to be a coach? It is just nonstop work. And if you want to be around your family after having this long, difficult, you know, football career, do you want to now go to coaching where you're, you know, it's stuck in your office until 2 a.m. in the morning every single day? Uh, a lot of guys don't want to do that, and that's totally fair. And so maybe that was something Fanica decided against. So um, I, I'm not entirely sure what Fanica's plans are, but there's a lot of good reasons to to not just assume that he should be the next O-line coach. And even if he wanted to go into that full, that, that, that coaching profession now full-time, wouldn't it make more sense for him to spend a year as an offensive line assistant full-time mm-hmm. instead of just an intern? Or do you think he's ready to... If Fanica came to the Steelers and say, look, I want to do this full time, do you think he would be the right guy uh, to, to go immediately full time? I mean, it's hard for me to, to know his readiness, but that would be a pretty big leap because he hasn't had a lot of coaching experience outside of those intern trips or whatever he did. And then to go from that to being the full time offensive line coach would be quite a jump for anybody, him included. I agree. And that's, that, that's kind of where I, people just yeah. think that you just go right from playing, you know, uh, in, in the head coaching and that, 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 that's not always the, uh, the yeah, case I, there. I saw an article. Someone suggested Heath Miller should be the next tight end <laughs> coach for this team. And I was like, well, that's, that's some low hanging fruit right there. Not yeah. going to happen. Good luck getting him back around a football field again. Uh, Michael Wu writes in, Hi, Dave, Alex. Uh, With your recent request for podcast ratings, I thought of a new stat. Adjusted net 
stars per podcast attempt. And don't forget that stars per podcast isn't as important as successful podcast rate. Ah, oh, I see what you're <laughs> doing there, Michael. In all seriousness, I think Canada can really help the offense, especially with motion and scheme. As you guys have pointed out, the pre-snap motion seemed very clunky, and it almost looked like it was just patched onto Feetner's existing offense for the heck of it. With Canada being the likely OC now, he can make motion part of the actual play design and intent. It just seems crazy that people are blaming Canada for the clunky pre-snap motion when it's Feetner's Feetner who seemingly didn't know how to use it properly. It's like trying to get your boss to finally use PowerPoint and getting the blame when their presentation is clunky, but I'm not in their meetings, obviously, so let me uh, uh, be straight if, if I'm being too harsh on making wild assumptions. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, there, you know, uh, did they just think that you, you you bring the pig in and put lipstick on it and that's the way that you go? Maybe they thought that 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 could be a lot of times it did look like that. It looked like let's just take this play and add some motion onto it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, there was some yeah. elements of, of that, but then on the flip side, there were some other things where it just looked okay. That looks that looks kind of you know a, a little like, like something like that they haven't done before. Uh, but my my general takeaway will remain that a lot of it looked uh, clunky most of the year when it came to the motion. It did, but that's not a surprise either. Just given that this was new for this offense, you had no off-season program, you had no training. Well, you had a training camp, but you just didn't have the traditional things to work on that stuff the way you would in a normal season. And plus, yeah, this, this is brand new for Ben and brand new for this team. And so I'm not surprised that it was clunky and it can get better as you kind of work things out. So um, I'm not saying that it can't get better, but obviously, as we talked about at the top of the show, just overall, Canada is not going to probably be able, be able to run his full offense when you don't have that threat of a running quarterback at all. And that's going to kind of hamstring some of the things I'm sure Canada would like to be able to do. One of the biggest tasks, and I think we just talked about it on, on a recent show here when it comes to Canada or whoever, uh, a, a, an extremely good offensive coordinator in the NFL makes everything look like everything else, but is able to do quite a bit off of that, that, one of five looks, if you will, uh, right. uh, with personnel, with formations. All right. Uh, you can rotate out the personnel, uh, still use the same formation and run six different things off of it. Uh, and that includes different motions. That's the task in today. It really has been the task in, in general over the years, but in today's NFL, uh, with the tape and the study and, and everything that goes on uh, go, goes into this now, no, it, there is some reinventing of the wheel to some extent. But let's face it, Mills concepts, Mills concept, NAS, you know, NASCAR concept, NASCAR, whatever, uh, 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 sale com combinations. You, you get you know, uh, Yankee concepts. All that's the same, right? Mm -hmm. You no, know, nobody's coming up with a lot of new route combination differences for the most part the task in it is down distance formation personnel making everything look as much as like everything else but being different at the same time if that makes sense right yeah it's just about having a core philosophy of base plays and then being able to build off of that i think it's just an overall quick summary of what it what it means to be a good coach you have your core philosophy of this is who we are this is what we do and this is how we're going to build off of what we do you can you can continue to run that 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 uh uh that three by one bunch right you know uh but what all can you do off of that can can you do that? Can can you set up a situation where you can run that on any down and distance, and run eighteen different things off of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, does that, that make sense? It's, yeah, it's about constraint plays. You know, one play that sets up another. Um, that that's the goal of a coach. And conversely, can you run a a a a uh, twelve or a twenty two personnel grouping, make it look? You know, use use the same personnel in it, make it look strangely different, but yet do you know pass and run off of it uh, uh, effectively. The more that you can make things look 
the same pre-snap, but yet do things once the ball is snapped differently, the more and then obviously execute, the, the more success you're going to have uh, offensively in today's NFL. Yeah, you look at some of the Shanahan schemes. Their inside zone, outside zone, uh, and their boot game look the same. So the defense never knows where the ball's going because everything just looks the exact same until you know, the quarterback either you know pulls the ball away or hands it off. How about a first first time emailer here from Richmond, California? I don't even know where Richmond, California. Where is Richmond, California at, Alex? Do you know? Mm, I don't know offhand. I can look it up though. I'm gonna um, Google that real quick because I've never heard of Richmond. Uh, California uh, uh, city in Western Contra Costa County. Uh, so that's out towards, I guess, Berkeley area, I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little north of Berkeley. It looks uh, like. some, somewhere in there. So there we go. That's our geography lesson of the day there. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Michael writes in, hi, guys. Been listening from the beginning, but first time emailing in. This is what we love to hear here, Alex. Steelers fan out here in East Bay of California, what used to be the center of Raiders Nation before they cut and ran to Vegas. If the Steelers go the direction of promoting Matt Canada to OC for, 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 for the future moving forward, and as I email you today Saturday Saturday reports sound like that's what uh, they're going to do are they all but admitting that Mason Rudolph is not the future quarterback for this team and we will be drafting a quarterback either this year if Ben retires or next year if he sticks around I say this because Canada's offense seems to be predicated on having a quarterback who can move around and make plays and Mason Rudolph may be one of the most cement footed quarterbacks in the league right now setting his foot uh, setting his feet and not moving one bit as he goes through this progression. if Canada is in fact our OC and Ben sticks around would we be better off re-signing Josh Dobbs to be the backup, given if Ben goes down hurt, at least Dobbs could be could could, could use his feet? But I see where he's going with this. Uh, also, count me in as wanting uh, waiting for those fungible minutia T-shirts to come out too. I think we <laughs> really are saw on to something there, uh, Michael. Here's here's the thing that goes back to with 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 everybody seemingly being worried about Mason Rudolph uh, uh, being the quarterback of the future past. 2021 everybody's way everybody's worried way too much about that and who the coordinator decision is when it comes to that everybody's reading way too much into that right now the fact of the matter is is that rudolph's contract is, ends after 2021 in the that's in the story period Rudolph's contract comes to a current contract comes to the end at the end of 2021. There's no way in God's green earth. Mason Rudolph's going to sign an extension this off season to extend his contract. Zero. Am I correct, Alex? You are correct. All right. For some reason, if Ben does not come back, if Ben retires or they cut been the likelihood of the team drafting a quarterback obviously increases to some degree am i correct in 2021 yes all right whatever that degree is is more than what it is if ben says that he's coming back correct yes okay now, if Ben does not come back, and let's say you spend whatever draft pick on, on a quarterback in 2021, the odds of Mason Rudolph opening up the season as your starting quarterback are high. Am I correct? Yes. Even if Ben does not come back in 2021, are you is Mason Rudolph going to get an extension this offseason? No. All right, so basically you're getting into a situation, what what I would like to refer to as Mason Rudolph being a lame duck quarterback, all right? Either he, if he's your starter in 2021, he has to play, he damn near short of taking you to the Super Bowl, which he would probably have to do, or take you way up, well deep into the, in, into the playoffs, is the only way that Mason Rudolph comes back in 2022, and obviously... In order to get him back in 2022, if you did not extend his contract in 2021, would be placing the franchise tag on him. And how many of you see that happening? I hope zero. All right. So 
Don't read anything more into the Steelers' backup quarterback situation, anything more than when Mason Rudolph's contract set to expire, which is after the 2021 season. That's where the discussion begins, and that's where the discussion ends, if you ask me. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I don't think this was some sort of, okay, you know, multi-step approach. We're going to, you know, promote Canada in order to influence Rudolph's future. It's just, you know, who, who do you think is the best guy that's going to help you right now? Who do you think is the best man for that job? Uh, and, and you worry about, you know, future stuff in the future. All right, Craig Foster writes in, thanks for the great work, guys. Love the show. If you were Kevin Colbert, would you try to sign Ben to a three to four extension at $25 million per year like Brady and Breeze are getting? No new guaranteed money. Just reduce his 2021 cap hit, but keep the option open for him playing past 2021 at a more reasonable salary. Would Ben consider it? Here's the thing. When it comes to, 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 to and we, we kind of, Craig, hopefully we addressed a lot of this here. If it was an extension that the years past 2021 were not voidable years, what's in it for Roethlisberger, right? And especially if he's not getting new money, if the only new money he was getting on it was actually if he was kept on the roster each year and he, and he got whatever the salary was, is that enough for him to do an extension, a real, uh, what we would call a real extension just to reduce his cap number? Uh, I would say no. Uh, I, I, if I'm Ben and Ben's agent and, and I wanted to leave open the idea of me really playing past 2021, the only way I'm doing such an extension is if you give me new guaranteed money this offseason as part of that extension, which we discussed earlier in the show there. Uh, you know, to me, unless you're you're unless you're going to part of this extension, if it was a real extension and you thought there was a chance that, that Ben would play in 2022, telling him that we'll fully guarantee your 2022 salary, plus there be some sort of a option bonus, a, a roster bonus there, that helps us make up us not giving you new money for lowering your cap hit. Does that make sense, Alex? Yeah, it does. All right. So that's the either, either Ben's going to take a, 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 a what we would call a real extension that includes new money in it, uh, or he's going to do an extension that really essentially says 2021 is my final year uh, in, in the NFL period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I think it'll be one of the most interesting questions about the approach, not only for what the team wants to do, but maybe more importantly, what is Ben's mindset? Does he want to commit longer or not? And I, I don't know if we know the answer to those questions right now. Uh, how about we end on that note here? We're a couple hours into this now here. So uh, with that, uh, well, we, we're going to do the, uh, the YouTube uh, uh, live tonight. Yeah, maybe just for a half hour is kind of my plan, but uh, Dave and I will be on YouTube 7 to probably 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time answering your guys' Steelers questions because I know there will be some questions about Canada and Feetner and, and all those type things. All right, uh, and then uh, we'll get in a little bit more into the free agents and the cap and all as, as this week go, goes on. So uh, currently our plans are to be back on Wednesday uh, with, with with the next uh, Terrible Podcast episode and uh, and go from there. So in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Uh, follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show the terrible podcast at gmail.com uh, if you like what we do and you want to donate uh, if you think we're, we're worthy of it go to steedersdepot.com hit the donate button upper right navigational bar uh, conversely if you would like an ad free version of steedersdepot.com it's been very popular uh, go to steedersdepot.com hit the ad free button upper right navigational bar and for $25 for one calendar year you can have an ad free version of steedersdepot.com so uh, with that uh, we appreciate everybody listening and uh, Alex and I uh, will be back on uh, on Wednesday and as always thanks for listening to the terrible podcast with Dave and Alex